If you're starting SEO from zero, the worst thing you can do is follow some giant checklist. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to prioritize the first 90 days of SEO as an e-commerce brand, whether you're whether you just launched your site yesterday or whether you're just starting SEO for the first time. This way, you can get momentum quickly, skip the fluff, and start driving revenue in the very first few weeks of your campaign, not just vanity metrics. So, let's get to it. Now, the two the two biggest mistakes I see across the board with brands starting SEO for the first time, and that again goes if you're a new brand that launched yesterday or just like an established brand that's just starting SEO for the very first time. Two biggest mistakes I see. First, prioritizing the wrong items. Second, viewing SEO as a set it and forget it tactic. Okay. Now let's talk about prioritization. SEO is about leverage. Okay. You need to prioritize what is going to move the needle early. This more often than not means content and links more so than it means some laundry list of technical SEO items. Okay. Yes, technical SEO is important. You want to have a good foundation. But again, like if you just go down, you know, some 100 point checklist of technical SEO and that takes you three or four weeks and you've not done any content or link building, you're three, four weeks in and you've got nothing to, you've got absolutely nothing to show for it guaranteed. Okay. Second thing, viewing SEO as a set it and forget it tactic, just like every other channel you have, retention marketing, paid performance, organic creative, whatever. It is a constantly evolving strategy. Okay. You cannot just do it once. You cannot just like do SEO on your entire site and then assume in some long distant point, like future distant point, you're going to rank number one. Okay. Simply not going to work. Okay. Now these are the two biggest mistakes. There is a third mistake that I see that actually involves both of these. And the third mistake is actually paying a freelancer, an agency, um, someone in house, a VA, whatever, to actually do all of these things for you. Okay. If you pay someone to do it from scratch, you're probably wasting, you're definitely wasting your money and you're probably wasting both yourself and the other party's time. Okay. If you don't know what you're doing from SEO from scratch, you should learn it yourself before you bother paying anyone else. Okay. And this goes for really any agency model or freelancer model. If you don't know what you're doing, it's going to be very difficult for you to hire someone good to do it for you. Okay. Because they're just probably going to take your money and lie to you about how things are going because you never bothered to learn it yourself. So my other big, big piece of advice for starting SEO from scratch is to do it actually yourself from scratch. And if you decide you want to outsource it later on, then do that. Okay. Now let's get into the actual timelines of growth for SEO at kind of each different phase, right? So I've pretty much broken this down into three phases. Um, the first phase is like month one. Okay. Phase two is months two through, uh, three or two through four, excuse me. And then after that, it's been like months four onward. All right. So foundational stuff. This is month one. Quite frankly, though, if you get through all this stuff, you should move on to the phase two stuff more quickly. Okay. Like you don't need to wait till, you know, day three, you want to just start doing month two stuff. All right. Now month one priority list of priorities. Okay. Site architecture. Okay. You need to make sure your product, your collection pages, your category pages, whatever. Um, and other key landing pages have a very clear hierarchy from day one. Okay. If you want to rank a page on Google, it should be within ideally one to three clicks from the top of your site architecture. Okay. So if you build a landing page and it's not linked from anywhere, it's never going to rank like simple as that. Okay. So make sure you have your architecture dialed in, right? This goes kind of alongside, you know, making sure you have the very basic SEO things taken care of. These are so easy. There's no excuse for not doing it. Okay. URL structure, meta titles, you know, H1s, um, and clean internal linking. Okay. All those things are super fucking easy. And again, if you, once you do them like three or four times, they're going to become second nature and it's not going to feel like a task you have to do. Okay. It's just going, it's going to be second nature to you, like guaranteed. Okay. These are super low effort, extremely high leverage tasks that are going to compound over time into enormous wins. All right. Other thing here, keyword research. Okay. You are not just hunting search volume. You are not just hunting low competition. Okay. You need to actually visualize your customer, your buying journey, and you need to map keywords to kind of each phase of that process or each step in that process. Okay. Start with the bottom of the funnel. What kinds of things are people searching for when they're ready to buy? When, the, when their credit card is in hand, what are people searching to buy products like yours? Okay. Build pages for all these, then work your way up middle of the funnel. Okay. Do the same thing. You know, what are they researching? Who are they comparing you against? Who are they comparing products against? Solutions, all that kind of stuff. Map keywords to those kinds of pages you need to create. And then at the very end of it, do the same thing at the top of the funnel. Okay. I would even argue if you just, for most brands, if you just map, map out the bottom of funnel and middle of funnel, that's going to be enough content for you to have to create slash optimize for the next few months of your time. You could obviously probably put 
the top funnel keyword research and also definitely top funnel creation on the back burner until you've exhausted bottom and middle of funnel stuff. Okay. Again, if you just look at like Ahrefs and SEMrush, those, those tools are just that they are just tools. Okay. They will not help you build a full keyword research strategy. They will not tell you which pages to create. They simply give you information, keyword difficulty, link app, search volume, all that kind of stuff. Okay. You have to factor that in and you have to sort through the data on your own. And that is how you will end up with a good strategy in the first month. Okay. Um, last thing here is analytics. Okay. Maybe even the first thing you should do probably before you even take care of your, your site architecture. Cause again, it's super easy. It's a super like, yeah, low effort, high leverage task. Okay. Set up search console, set up keyword tracking, set up GA4. Okay. You want to have that information from day one. That way, as you start making changes to the site, you can iterate faster. Okay. You do everything. If you like start writing content, start building links and you don't have any like measurable data, you're not getting, you're not going to be able to function as effectively as you would have been had you had the data. Okay. So set this also, set also this stuff up on day one, right? Moving into phase two. Okay. So pretty much like month two and onward. Right. Um, and again, if you're moving really fast, like at our agency, we get like, we're doing phase one and phase two all in the first month. Okay. But I'm just tailoring this for kind of the average, you know, one man brand, one man band, one man brand, what have you. Okay. So months two. You've got your computer research, you've got your set architecture, you've got URL structure, you've got meta titles, all that kind of stuff. Okay. You probably have a ton of new pages as well. That's a good thing. All right. Next thing you should do, pick the top five, 10, 15 pages, maybe, um, your top five to 10, 15, like revenue driving pages that have the highest chance of ranking early on, and also are going to drive the most revenue and you should optimize those pages first. Okay. Now I said revenue driving, that means bottom of funnel. Okay. Again. Do not write any top funnel blog content until you have fully optimized your bottom of funnel. Okay. You should not be caring about traffic at the start of month two. You are primarily interested in rankings that will eventually turn into rank. Okay. Writing a blog about God, I don't know how to pack a suitcase, whatever, like that article is not going to drive any revenue though. It may be easy to rank for hypothetically, you would be far better served trying to rank for some low competition suitcase related keyword for your collection page or maybe your product page. Okay. So prioritize revenue generating activities first before you just start chasing some one off keyword that may yield, may yield some results and very likely will not yield any revenue. Okay. Um, if you are a new site, you're going to be optimizing these for the first time. Okay. So you need to target keyword in a few places, URL, meta title, meta description, H1, um, first sentence of your page content, whether that's product description, collection description, whatever. Um, and you also want to mention the keyword obviously a handful of other times organically throughout that content. And you also want to make sure you have keyword variants of that same keyword in various, you know, H2s and H3s on that page. Okay. That is like basic level shit. If you are optimizing a page that already existed, let's say you're uh, one or two years into running your brand and you're just starting SEO, you're going to optimize your existing pages. Okay. Again, run through that same list of things. You're just going to be updating the content rather than producing a whole new page. Okay. Very straightforward stuff. Okay? Um, after you've optimized existing stuff, cause you can, you can get, you can get bigger, better, and faster wins out of optimizing existing content than you can from creating new content. So I always recommend to start with any content that exists on your site at the bottom of the funnel, because again, you can get bigger wins more quickly than if you just start creating new content and ignore the stuff that already exists. Right. After you've done all of the, existing pages, move on to new content. Okay. I guarantee you, you have not come even close to scratching the surface of all the keywords you should be targeting at the bottom of the funnel. Go find those keywords and create new pages to target those keywords. Okay. A lot of those are going to come in the form of like, um, new collection pages slash new category pages to build out. Some of them may come in the form of product pages. Okay. Go find them, figure out what kind of page type you need to build to match the keyword and then build the page, optimize it accordingly, right? That will take care of product pages and collection pages. And again, that will take care of all existing pages on your site. If you have some, um, and also any new pages you need to create. And again, if you're starting from literally like literally zero on the brand, that'll be all new content for you. Okay. Once you've done this, assuming you're like a one man band, you've got limited resources, limited time, you know, cash flow, whatever, do all the content first, do all the internal linking first. That stuff is beyond your time free, right? It is, and it's going to yield enormous like compounding benefits in the future. So 
pretty much an end ROI if you do it right, okay? Doesn't cost you any money if you do it yourself, just your own time. Put it in place, optimize, iterate over time. It'll get, it'll keep growing, okay? Now, assuming you have limited bandwidth, again, could do the con first once you've exhausted all of your bottle funnel content and your internal linking, I would then pivot into actually backlink building as well, okay? Again, you could hire a VA, um, you could do it yourself, you could pay, you know, like you could go find links on marketplaces, whatever, but I would start building links pretty much the moment you have all of your content in place, okay? And again, you should be speed running through this content. Yes, there are certain places you should have certain keywords for it to rank. However, do not obsess over a page for weeks or even days at a time waiting for it to be the perfect page, okay? It's never gonna be perfect. There's no perfect recipe of a page that's gonna make it rank number one. I don't care what Surfer SEO says. I don't care what Phrase says. I don't care what any of those pages, like those tools will tell you, okay? Hit publish on your page, check Search Console weekly, bi-weekly, and iterate on, on the information it tells you from there, okay? That is how you build a good page over time. Now, once you've done all that, or as, as you're kind of in that feedback loop in Search Console, you start doing, you start building links. Again, reach out yourself, Go to a market, a reputable marketplace and find good links um, and start building links from scratch, okay? Google's algorithms primarily function on two things, relevance and authority. You supplied the relevance already at this point by providing all the content, okay? That is, a, that is the relevance component of, of search, okay? The next part you have to supply is authority. Without any authority, your relevant content will never get seen. So the authority helps get that visibility, right? Now... Starting from scratch, you probably have, like I said, low on time, low on cash, whatever. There are ways to be to be efficient in both, okay? There are tons of free foundational links, likely in the hundreds. Business directories, social media profiles, all those things. They're all free, minus your time to go create an account and set up your listing, okay? Hire a VA to do it, do it yourself, whatever. Spend like an hour a day doing it. Or, you know, set, a, set aside a weekend and do it, all the foundation links in one weekend, right? All very doable. They're all free. And you're going to get, you know, a couple hundred links for you, like for your website. And that's going to start accruing authority. It's going to start making it look like an actual reputable website. Okay. You could do um, link exchanges with other people, like other brands in your niche, um, like any friends you have in e -com, or any just people you kind of met along the way. Link, link exchanges are largely free. Again, just find your time to set them up. You can run like press syndication campaigns, which are like anywhere from 50 to a couple hundred dollars, which will get you immediately like a, probably between like two and 500 no follows. But again, it is giving you a lot of visibility right away, right? If you have the cash flow, again, like I said, link marketplaces or start doing outreach to sites within your niche on your own, like just manually via email, okay? Go pay 50, 150 bucks, 200 bucks for a link, build links to your homepage, okay? I would recommend all the links you build in the first like probably three to four months of your SEO journey like 90% of them, if not more of them, should be to your own page, okay? You are just looking to stack authority into the domain and you will use internal links to distribute it. As you move beyond, you know, months four, five, six, you can start building more links to internal pages, but you really want to establish authority early on, okay? I've seen tons of agencies work on brands that are starting from scratch, which I said was like already cardinal sin number one, but I've seen agencies build, inter like build backlinks to internal pages on a brand new site and the site will quickly rank like really, really highly because it's getting a direct link. And then once, I guess the engine, let's get like the algorithms finally catch up, all of a sudden like the link distribution, link proportions are so out of whack. The site just like goes up really high and then immediately crashes and burns, okay? I've seen this happen a ton with brands hiring agencies early on. So again, if I don't recommend hiring an agency the first few months of your SEO journey starting from scratch. One, because you don't really have a lot of the money and two, because they're going to do things a lot differently than they should be done. If you, if you choose to hire someone, you should give them explicit instructions to build homepage links, like branded homepage links only are what I'd recommend in the first few months, okay? This is the safest way to build a good foundation and set you up for long-term success, okay? So that's my recommendation. Next up, phase three, kind of scaling phase. So you've got all of your bottom funnel content, you've got your internal link infrastructure going, You've got backlinks flowing into the homepage now, and that's being distributed out through core page, two core pages by way of internal links, okay? You have a very solid foundation at this point. Again, we're looking at like probably month three, four at this current moment in time, assuming you followed the same timeline I just laid out. Now, if you wanna be really aggressive and you wanna go in the very first week, you wanna do all your kid research, you wanna start publishing bottom funnel pages, 
you want to start interlinking, by all means, you should do that. This this timeline can be faster. This is just like a very, like, this is a working version, okay? Feel free to modify it as you need, okay? But now, moving into months three, four plus, or at least phase three, whatever whatever timeline that puts you on. Double down on what's working, okay? You probably built a strategy on day one or two. Do not assume that in month four, that strategy is still going to be the best version of the strategy for your brand, okay? Double down on what's working. That means if all of a sudden a few collection pages are starting to emerge as front runners and they have a lot of potential to get to them in one spot, just focus your attention on those. Okay. Don't just keep executing the rest of the strategy. Like just put more in, just put more like resources, whether it's more links, more content, like supporting content, more backlinks, whatever. Put that into those pages that are working and just watch them continue to rise quickly. Okay. It is better to kind of indulge in those lead pages and rank them highly as opposed to just trying to like do SEO on the entire site, right? There's a very good chance, there's a very high likelihood that a, a few core, like key pages on your site will do most of the heavy lifting for your strategy. And a lot of the others won't do, like will do little to nothing, okay? That's fine. Just make sure you're getting, you're squeezing all the wins out of the, the pages that are working and you'll be good to go, okay? So like I said, pages emerge, a few things you can do. You can build more backlinks to those internal pages, assuming you've built a lot of foundational links. You can build more internal links in between those pages. Um, and in order to do so, you should probably build out more supporting blog content for topical authority within those particular clusters, okay? Um, this is going to help boost their performance, okay? Maybe they plateaued at like, keep, like position five or whatever, adding more internal links, adding more backlinks, adding more supporting content, like guaranteed all three of those things are gonna move the needle, okay? Um, at this point, cause you got a lot of foundation in, you've probably, you're probably pretty comfortable with publishing content and how your SEO infrastructure really works at this point. So now you can start to scale content. Okay. Again, don't just publish for high search volume, low competition, or, you know, vice versa. Like think about your customer journey. Okay. What is happening in search, which categories are emerging, which categories need more support, or you could even think across channels, right? You may have some product category crushing, you know, in Google search, like in Google paid ads, you may have some category crushing in, you know, organic social, whatever. I will say product categories and like certain products will, f will be higher performers in one channel, but not another. However, there is often an overlap. Okay. So if you're getting really good traction in one channel, it's definitely worth at least optimizing and building out support for that same product or product category in a channel, like guess in a channel, like organic search. Okay. So think about that. At the same time, you know, months three, four, five, six, seven in, like once you have built out this huge foundation and you're starting to scale everything up, SEO should really be feeding the rest of your own channels, okay? You should be signing up more email and SMS subscribers. Um, you should be capturing way more branded search and way more like competitor alternative type search, okay? To maximize and like pretty much infinitely maximize your ROI on SEO, okay? So um, kind of summing up here, You'll notice I barely talked about technical SEO. Most guides you read about starting SEO from scratch will preach entirely about technical SEO. Okay. As I said earlier, if you spend the first four weeks on technical SEO on day 31, or if you spend the first 30 days on technical SEO on day 31, you're probably going to be really upset you did that. <laughs> and two, have no money to show for it, which is going to pretty much run out of cycle. Stress you didn't do it. And two, you didn't make money. So you're also stressed about not doing it. Okay. Content and links are going to move a little very early on. Yes, you should get some technical kind of foundations in place, but you do not need a perfect page speed or perfect core web vitals or all these different kinds of schema or even any of that stuff, okay? Like there are a lot of things that can be put on the back burner until you've got some traction, okay? So I would rather you prioritize things and move the needle early on, iterate and start growing as opposed to delaying your growth or potentially stunting it because you waited too long, okay? See you guys tomorrow.